Today we'll be discussing butterfly spreads and how to trade them within the Thinkorswim web app. We're going to start by learning what they are, how they work, and also how to manage them throughout the life of the trade. Now just as a quick reminder, I will be using the web-based version of Thinkorswim, so if your platform looks a little bit different than this one, you are probably on the desktop site. In order to access this one, you will need to head over to the website trade.thinkorsim.com and then go ahead and log in with the exact same user ID and password that you normally use. Now, like I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, we are going to be learning about butterfly spreads, which are composed of both a long and short vertical spread with the short option sharing a common strike. Rather than trying to use these options to bet on a stock price's direction, a butterfly spread is intended to be far more neutral, paying off the absolute most if the underlying stock doesn't move at all until expiration. Honestly, I generally like to think of them more as lottery tickets since it has very little risk and a huge payoff, but with a very low chance of ever getting to make that max profit on the trade. Now, if you're brand new to butterflies, that probably sounds a little bit confusing, but I promise you it'll make a lot more sense after we go through a few examples. So for now, let's go ahead and begin by pulling up an option chain. And to do that, we'll start by coming up here to the search box and throwing in the stock symbol that we want to trade. In this case, I'm typing in Apple or AAPL. From there, we can then find the option chain by coming down here below and simply clicking on the little arrow to the left of option chain. That will then display all of the available options expirations down here, and on the left hand side we can see all of the expiration dates themselves, beginning here at the January 13th of 2023 expiration, and going all the way out to June 20th of 2025. If we were to look to the right of each of those expiration dates in the parentheses here, we can see the number of days until expiration, then coming to the far right hand side, we can also see the implied volatility as well. If we were to come back up here and actually click on one of those expiration dates, in this case January 20th, you can then see a list of a few of the available strikes right down here in the center, beginning here at 134 and going out to 136. In order to expand that list out even further to see even further out of the money options, we could either hit the more button on either side, or by coming up here to the strikes menu in the upper right hand corner, simply clicking on that. Then within the menu down below, we can select how many strikes we wanted to see. So in this case, I'll come down here below and select 12. And now looking down the center, we can see quite a few more available strikes beginning here at 129 and going out to 140. If we were to look to the left of that strikes column, you can actually see all of the available call options. To the right are all of the available put options. Taking a look at the top of that option chain, we can also see these column headers here, which are simply telling us what information is being displayed in those columns. At the moment, we've got the current volume for the day, the open interest, the delta, the probability in the money, and the current bid ask of those options. Now, in order to actually place the trades themselves, you will simply be clicking on the asking price whenever you want to buy and the bid price whenever you want to sell. Since we're going to be creating a butterfly spread today, we're going to need to begin by selling an at the money option. Either side, whether a call or put, it doesn't really matter. For right now, in this example, I'll just come down here below and I'm going to sell an at the money put, which in this case would be the 134 strike put. To the right, I can see that it is currently trading for $1.74 by $1.76. And since I want to sell it, I'm going to come back over here to the current bid price and click on that number. You can then see that that automatically built out an order down here below to sell one of those 134 puts. After we've done that, we'll then need to add the wings by buying puts to either side. So if I were to come back up here to the option chain and just scroll down a little bit so I can see to either side. So now what I can do is come up here and buy a put to either side of the short put equidistance apart. So in this case, if I were to come up here and let's say I wanted to put on a five point wide butterfly, if I were to look down five points further out of the money on this side would be the 129 puts. And here in order to buy that put, I'm going to click on the current asking price, 38 cents. I'll then need to come down here to the other side and look five points further out of the money on this side. And in this case, that would be the 139 puts, and currently the asking price is 525. So in order to buy that, I'm going to go ahead and click on it. 
Coming back down below to the order ticket, we can now see all three of those legs right here. But we're not quite done. The very last thing I need to do is double up the number of short options. So here where it says sell, and I'm selling the 134s, I'm going to need to sell two of those. So I'm going to adjust that up to two. And after I do that, if I were to look right up here above, it now says that I'm actually going to be buying one butterfly. So it knows now what I'm doing. If we're to come back down here, I want you guys to remember that the butterfly spread is essentially just a long and short vertical combined. So in this example, it's as if we're buying the 139 by 134 put spread while simultaneously selling the 134 by 129 put spread. So if you think of it that way and you're already familiar with spreads, I think you'll understand why the best outcome would be if the stock were to remain at exactly 134 throughout the life of the trade. That would mean the short put spread is going to expire worthless, where the long put spread is going to expire completely in the money. So we make max profit on both of them. That's the best case scenario. Now the chances of that happening are basically non-existent. It's basically never going to happen where the stock remains at exactly our short strikes throughout the expiration, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. For now, we'll just come down here below to the price of the butterfly, and currently you can see it's trading for $2.06, and that's going to be the total cost of the trade and also the max risk on the trade. So in this case, with the butterfly currently trading now at $2.02, .02, the max risk on this trade is going to be $202, whereas the max profit on the trade is going to be calculated by taking the width of the spread, so in this case $5 or 5 points, minus the cost. So $5 minus, let's just say $2.02, .02, our max profit in the best case scenario would be $298. Now we could adjust this price, which is currently $2.01, but for right now, since I want to get filled on this thing, let's just come down here below and hit review, and then hit send to actually place it. Once placed, if we were to scroll down just a little bit and look in the trade section, right here we can see that long butterfly. Now at the moment, this is actually displayed as a current trade, so that means we haven't actually bought it yet, it's still working, so I haven't bought the butterfly. And if I wanted to cancel it or edit it in some way, I could hit these little buttons in the lower right hand corner, cancel to outright cancel it, or edit it to edit the price in some way. I could also see that by coming back over here to the positions page, then coming back over here to the right to the position section, you can see I don't currently have it, and if I come up here and hit the activity tab, right here it shows that open order to buy one butterfly on Apple. Since I do want to get a fill on this thing, we're going to come over here and hit the little checkmark box, then come down below in the lower right hand corner and hit edit selected. From there, I'll just come up here to the order type limit and flip it over to a market order. So I fill immediately and now I can just come down here and hit review and then send. Since it was changed to a market order, it did fill immediately. And if we come back to the positions page, then come over here and open up my position right here on Apple. You can now see the butterfly spread right here. And over here on the right hand side, the current trade price, it says I did buy it for $2 and one penny. When it comes time to close the butterfly, and ideally we want to sell it for much more than we bought it for, we are simply going to come over here and click on the symbol, Apple. We'll then come down below to the trade section and just make sure each one of those contracts is checkmarked. So I'm going to be closing out of the entire butterfly. Then we'll come down to the lower right hand corner and hit close selected. That will then automatically build out a closing order to sell this butterfly spread. And if we come down here to the price section, right here I can set in my profit target. For me personally, I am generally trying to get out of these with about 25% of the max profit, but we'll talk about that best practices in just a minute. For now, I'm just going to come here and throw in a price of $2.75, which would be about a 25% profit on this thing, and then come over here to the day order and flip it over to GTC to make sure it goes out every single day. And now to place it, we'll just come down here below and hit review, and send to actually place it. But now that you know how to create a butterfly spread within here, let's cover some of the best practices. How to pick the expiration dates, how to pick the strike prices, and when to actually close out of the spread. If we begin first with the expiration that you should choose, I generally don't go out any further than a couple weeks in time. 
That's going to be because a large portion of the move is not going to happen until the last few days or even the last day of expiration. So again, for me, I usually pick an expiration in the next couple days, maybe a week or maybe two weeks at the most, but that's about it. Now, when it comes to picking these strike prices, you are generally going to choose to sell the at the money options and then buy equal distant wings to either side. And I'll generally do it about five points wide on either side. Now, if you instead choose to buy an out of the money butterfly, just keep in mind that you are now putting a directional component into that trade. Instead of remaining neutral by buying an at the money butterfly, you're instead saying you think the stock is going to move up or down to whatever that price might be. That might be the only time where it might make sense to pick the put side or the call side, but generally it doesn't really matter what side you purchase. You could do all calls, you could do all puts, doesn't really matter much. Now as for closing the butterfly, the one thing you do need to keep in mind is that you need to close this thing before it expires. Do not hold this through expiration, otherwise you do risk getting assigned and going long or short the stock. So to avoid all of that, to avoid all of that risk of ending up owning or shorting the stock, just close out the butterfly by selling it before it expires. I'd also recommend you have a predefined profit target in the back of your mind before you even enter the trade. For me, I usually aim for a modest return of 10 to 15% or maybe like 25% if I'm feeling up to it. But the main thing to remember is that you're never going to try to get anywhere close to the full max profit. That is going to be nearly impossible. It's almost a statistical impossibility that the stock could hit exactly where you think it's going to be on a particular day at a particular time of day. So again, just try and dampen your expectations, try and get a more modest return, maybe 10 to 25% at the most, but that's about it. Now on the flip side of things, if I'm wrong and things don't go in my favor, I generally leave my butterflies be. Since the risk is incredibly low, I paid so little for it, I don't have any mental stops that would cause me to exit the trade. The only thing I will do is close it before it expires, regardless of if it's for a profit or for a loss. Just make sure you exit the trade before expiration. I don't want any of you guys to get assigned the stock or go short the stock when you didn't really want to. Now, using those best practices, if I were to pull up, let's say, Meta as the example. Let's go ahead and throw in Meta up here. Coming back down here below and opening up the option chain. Like I said before, I typically like to trade my butterflies about a week out or the same week. So right here, I'm going to open up the January 20th for right now. Then coming down here below to the option chain, we're going to find the at the money option. So in this case, that would be the 136 strike, and that could either be the call side or the put side. For now, I guess I'll just stick to the call side. So I'm going to come over here and to sell those, I'm going to click on the current bid price of $2.90. Once that's done, I can then scroll down just a little bit. And remember, I'm going to be buying equal distant wings to either side. In that case, that would be buying the 131 calls by clicking on the asking price of 655, then coming down here below and purchasing the 141 calls as well. And again, clicking on the current asking price of 92 cents. Once that's all done, I can then move to the order ticket down here below. And in order to turn this into a butterfly, remember I need to sell two of the at the money options. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that to two. Up here at the top, you can now see I'm buying one of the butterflies, and it looks like down here I'm going to be paying $1.53. Besides just setting the opening price, and you know what, I'm actually going to leave it at that price, $1.55, and I'll even lock it in here. I'm also going to come down here below and add my closing ticket to this as well. So immediately after I buy this butterfly, I automatically want to put out my profit taking order right behind it to get out at a 25% profit. So to do that, I'm going to come down here below and click on the word contingent. That will then create another order just below the first one, a closing ticket with a little linking button showing me how these orders are linked together, which are currently marked with a then button, meaning the first order has to fill, then the second order will get submitted. Now I know I'm going through this quick, but I really recommend you check out this video about advanced orders to learn more about it because I don't want to spend too much time on it. But again, for now, all I'm saying is whenever I buy this butterfly, I automatically want to put out my closing order behind it. So then this order will go out and now I can set my profit target. In this case, I said I wanted my profit target to be about 25% of the max profit. 
the max profit being the width of the spread. So in this case, five bucks minus what I paid for it, $1.55. So the max profit is $3.45. So if I were to look at taking 25% of that number, that would be a profit of 86 cents. So all I'm gonna do is add that number, 86 cents, to the price that I'm paying, $1.55, and my profit target is gonna be if this butterfly ever hits $2.41. Since that is very unlikely to happen today, I'm gonna come over here to the right and adjust this over from a day order to a GTC order, and then in order to place it, I will just come down here below and hit review, and then send. Once submitted, if we were to head back over here to the positions page, you can now see the open order just over here on the right, and I haven't actually bought that butterfly yet, but if I do, it's automatically going to trigger this closing order ticket to go out next. But that'll cover just about everything you need to know within here on how to create butterfly spreads. Hopefully you now feel at least a little bit more comfortable with the TOSS website and how to do it within here. I know it was a lot and I covered a lot only briefly, so if you are looking to learn more, consider checking out this video next. You might find it helpful as well. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week and I'll see you on the next one.